Hi, it's Gord Cook from Building Knowledge Canada and Construction Instruction and welcome back to the Cook Family Cottage Project up here in Southampton, Ontario on the shores of Lake Huron. A beautiful spring day. I'm really pleased to be able to show you the second in a series of videos that we'll be doing on this uh, Net Zero project. And with me today is uh, Derek, as you've met last time. Derek, nice to see you. Yeah, you too. How's it going? It's going great. Nice spring day, finally a little bit of warmth. Yeah, finally, yeah. Uh, you've made some good progress. Uh, let us know uh, what's been happening. Yeah, we've got the ICF finished, as you can see behind us. Uh, the second floor is all done. Uh, roof trusses are up, and we've got some Tyvek on the garage. Most of the windows installed. We've left a few out to demonstrate the install on those today. Yeah, thanks for that. So we're going to be showing today a couple of window installs. We'll obviously talk about the Tyvek over top of the ICF. We'll highlight a little bit, although the roof's on. We'll think, talk about the uh, Protec on the roof. But most importantly, you can see in the background big bales of, uh, of yellow foam. That's the radon guard. That's going to be the start of our floor assembly. We're going to talk about uh, moisture, radon control, insulation on that slab, and ultimately get to the in-floor heat. So lots to show today. Derek, you guys are here working. Yep. We're ready to go. Let's get started. I'm very pleased to have with us today Bruce Kelly. Derek, you know, you and I have known Bruce for a long time. Bruce, you're the DuPont Tyvek specialist here up in this area. Tell us a little bit about that role and what it is you offer. Yeah, I'm uh, one of uh, 160 Tyvek specialists across uh, North America and our role is basically to work with builders like Derek and make sure the details are being done properly and uh, we also work with obviously building supply yard, uh, building officials, uh, other individuals as well. So. so in the context of this project I was kind of pleased, uh, Bruce, you were very kind to offer up some help and some assistance with product. And Derek, you got to choose products you like to use. Tell them a little bit about, you used a drain wrap uh, specifically. Tell us just a little bit about that choice. Yeah, we've used the Tyvek drain wrap for quite a while now. We do find it a little more durable. It's, it's corrugated, so it, uh, it does allow some water to drain through if there's uh, strapping uh, nailed tight to it. And there's a lot of advantage in UV resistance. Yeah, get that longer open time, Bruce. What is the UV resistance? Yeah, so we provide a nine month UV exposure uh, for the drain wrap. It's a little heavier, better water, water hold out as well. So it physically is a, a slightly more robust product. It is. Yeah. Still I, I gets that good air tightness, vapor permeance though? Yeah, vapor permeance, still quite good. Great. And and is this pretty normal for builders? What are you seeing? Uh, no, I, I mean it really depends on the application. So uh, in this particular case, obviously this provides some drainage in behind wood siding, um, foam boards attached to OSB, for example, where you need some drainage. Right. In this case, we it's actually used on both the, the wall here in the garage, which we'll show in a minute, has foam board, but we're also using it on the main house, which is over top of ICF, and you asked me, so why the choice of house wrap over top of ICF? Uh, walk us through that. Well, the you know ICF uh, does leak, it still has joints, and uh, you still need a water management layer on the outside, and you want to make sure your windows are flush properly to that drainage layer as well. And, and let's be clear, Amvic was you know great partner in this, and and you know I would agree with you, ICF is not watertight per se, but most importantly, it's those penetrations, right? It's the windows and so on, which we're going to see here in a second how we do that window install. So even though it's insulated concrete form, we would still say from a building science perspective, protect against water. Nothing worse. The concrete itself, of course, isn't going to be damaged by water, but what about the interior finishes and so on? So we still like the drain wrap. What I think is most powerful about uh, the DuPont system, and Bruce, you can speak to some of this, is the array of accessories that we've got. It's not just about a product. I see way too many house wraps are applied with exactly the wrong tapes. I see a whole lot of red tape being used, and that's just not an approved product for for this. Tell us a little bit about some of these accessories. Right, so the regular white sheathing tape is uh, an approved for horizontal and vertical joints, but certainly not to flash your windows. Isn't that interesting? Not to be flashed to windows. It's right. not a flashing. No, nor is the red tape, which some builders might think it is. Right, <laughs> and it, what we're using here is a product called uh, Straight Flash. Yeah. So a straight flash is a rubber butyl adhesive um, with release papers on there for a flanged window. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the flex wrap for the sill and round top windows, that sort of thing. And we're going to see that go in. Yeah. And then we have another versatile flange uh, offering as well, straight flash VF, which can be used for a non-flanged window or a window with a brick mold. All butyl based. All butyl based. All approved as a system. Right. And ultimately, Derek, when you use all of that and you use an approved way, 
say he's been eligible for. Yeah, ten, a 10 year material and labor warranty. Kind of cool up here as a small builder, thinking Absolutely. about the risks on the lake. Yeah, we have a lot of wind driven rain, so this is a great system to use. And then this last little one is just kind of a, a, a brand new product for you guys. Tell us a little bit about right. this. So that's Flex Wrap Easy, and again, it's got two release papers on the back side. And, uh, Great for any electrical protrusions, dryer vent, uh, any exterior small little. Just show us paper. the flexibility of that, just the intent there. So that release paper comes off, and that would go on, and then that just fans around just like that. Very cool. So you can seal up any any small little item. Nice. So these are the kind of accessories that we're just so pleased to be using. Uh, that systems approach, uh, you know, my brothers and I are all worried about resiliency and durability. We talked about that in the first video. We just want this building to last literally generations, and it's nice to know we have a, a partnership with the DuPont Tyvek folks and specifically the Tyvek Specialist Network. So thanks very much for being here. What we'd like to do, of course, is get to the windows. Let's do a window install. Derek, you've left a few for us to, to try out. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are at the windows. Bruce, this is sort of the bread and butter of the Tyvek, right? The, the walls themselves are never an issue. It's always the penetrations. Derek, you do a really nice job of that, but Bruce, just walk us through the process that you like to see to make sure the windows install correctly. Okay, sure. So uh, first thing we want to do is do an eye cut on the window, straight across the top, like Derek's going to do here. And then we're going to go straight down the middle. and straight across the bottom. Nice. And then we were chatting about, you know, fold this in to protect the jams is typically the way you do it. Right. And then, Derek, you're gonna make some comments a little bit later on some of the challenge you've had with that, but let's, I just wanted to make that note that we are gonna, generally speaking, try to keep it to the inside. And, uh, but then we also want to do the cuts up top, right? Right, so we're going to do a 45 degree cut at the top and that's going to allow us to uh, install our head flashing and jam flashing once the window's in. I will say all of this is available on Construction Instruction, the app that uh, we've talked about before. All of this is in animated format. If you want to be able to show your guys on site exactly how to do it, it plays. So go to constructioninstruction.com uh, and, and download the app. And Derek's just going to tack up the uh, Tyvek at the head of the window to keep it out of the way before we put the window in. And then, and then there's another little variation we're starting to see, Bruce, that's kind of the end game of this. Just walk Derek through how you want him to cut the bottom sides as well. Right. So normally, uh, we would have just flashed the bottom with our flex wrap, but now we're gonna do the same sort of cut at the head at the bottom. And this is a 45 degree upward cut. And again, this is gonna allow to install the flex wrap and have the drain wrap uh, properly shingled over top of the flex wrap. So I'm gonna pull that tab back. So we're on top of the ICF, which makes it a little tougher to cut than normal. And so now the goal would be to stop any blowback of water. We're actually gonna put a bead of caulking here and then wrap this later on to the inside. But right now we're just gonna leave it open because we're gonna to have to wait till we get that flex wrap installed. So let's go ahead and install the flex wrap. That's fine. Yeah. Just as long as you get that release paper on the outside. So this flex wrap we're gonna feature obviously in a number of the videos. We'll probably show you another little shot of it later, but this has been that really the wow moment for you guys, right? To get that sill pan protection out of a flexible product. And I'll probably just make sure we get a good shot of that, Derek, when you go to flex it out. I'll stand back out of your way here. Really important that we come back and pressure roll that. We'll show that in just a second. Yep. So then we have the second release paper. 
Bruce, how common is this now in Canada? What percentage of builders would you say are doing this? A uh, good percentage, really. I mean, we are starting to see a lot more people, uh, contractors use this. And again, we're going to pressure roll that just a little bit here. Uh, Derek, go ahead. Uh, you're using Quad Max. As you know, I'm a big fan of that, that uh, LePage product, the, the OSI product. And it's just, this is just to stop the blowback or potential migration of water in from behind. This is sort of a belt and suspenders approach. Not everybody's doing this, but we just think it's a really nice detail to stop that moisture. And the big key of this cut, Bruce, was to make sure that we're not reverse shingled, but reverse lapped over top of that flex wrap in that corner. Beautiful. Nice. We're just gonna go ahead and tack that. Bruce, talk a little bit about some of the guys like to pull this all the way back. You like it seeing protecting the jam. What else are you hearing out there? Well, we like to see it brought back in and stapled to the back side of the stud. Uh, some guys like to bring it in halfway and just use a white sheathing tape and, and seal it down the center. And, um, and Derek, you've been saying to me, you like to, that approach of halfway. So when you do your foaming inside, that you, you get a good air seal because sometimes the air will slide between the foam and the uh, or between the Tyvek and the and the, and the stud. And you've got your quad max in there, so that's stopping some air and water as well. Right. So kind of cool. There's there's the start of, and then we'll let the guys go ahead and uh, finish the install of this window.